Welcome back. Recently, I posted a video showing the results of our mimosa leaf as fertilizer experiment. We wanted to see if we could use this common invasive nitrogen fixer to feed our gardens. So today I wanted to show you another update because, well, we definitely have a verdict. This bed is the one we fed with mimosa leaves. That is Albizia julebrissens. And for people that came in and said, don't call it mimosa. Mimosa could mean this or that or the other thing. It's a Persian silk tree. Okay, stop. Look, I always use the Latin names. So Albizia julebrissens, that's all you need to know. This is the bed right here that did not get the mimosa leaves. Now, hopefully you can tell the difference between this bed and this bed. There is a marked difference in leaf mass and growth. This bed that got the mimosa leaves is not as vigorous as this bed. It's very thick and filled in. Look at the leaf size, the mass of these plants. There's easily a 50% better growth on this side compared to this side. And incidentally, this side gets a little more sun. So isn't that an interesting thing? Now, some also said, I, you don't understand how nitrogen fixing works. Look up rhizobium. Look, don't do that. Do you have any idea how much I read? It's absolutely ridiculous. And if you missed the original setup, I talk about how I got it from a book written by Roland Bunch, where he talks about using tropical cover crops uh, through South and Central America, Africa, elsewhere, to restore the soil. And one of the things he mentioned was a demonstration they did where they took leaves from Glaricidia sepium, which is a common nitrogen fixing tree in the tropics used for living fences. We used to live it down when we use it when we were down in the Caribbean. There it is right there. That's with mimosa. That is without mimosa. So anyhow, Glaricidia sepium leaves, you talked about how they would bury some at the base of a crop and you would see such a beautiful increase in growth, it acted as a fertilizer. And this is something about nitrogen fixing plants that you should know and that is often, their leaves are very high in a protein, which means their leaves are higher in nitrogen. So if you look at alfalfa, right, which is a common animal fodder, very high in protein for a plant, more nitrogen. I've used it as a fertilizer. I've buried it into garden beds and seen beautiful growth even in poor soil. So we decided to do the same thing with the mimosa leaves. They're deep green, even on poor soil. So. I actually crumbled them into the surface. I know I said I plowed them in this last time. I didn't actually do that. I just pulled the soil back a little bit, sprinkled mimosa leaves all through there, and now they have really completely and utterly vanished. They're gone. They rotted into the ground. And that's one of the things too. You know, did it eat up carbon and cause a decrease in growth? No, it shouldn't work that way because it would be what's considered a green ingredient in the compost pile, high in nitrogen. And I put alfalfa pellets in just like this before, put them into the ground, planted directly over the top, and I saw better growth. So my guess is, after some further study, and one of you posted a link on uh, allelopathy in Albizia julebrissens is that Albizia julebrissen is allelopathic, meaning that it probably has some compounds in the leaf, in the leaf that suppress the growth of other plants, at least for a time period. So this is why we do backyard experimentation. 
because we want to see results right in our backyard. Does it work or does it not? And we learn from it. It's very easy to just set up a little test like this where you've got two beds and, oh, I'm going to try biochar. Okay, put some biochar in one bed, put no biochar in the other, put a lot in another, you know, like uh, Stephen Edholm did some years ago, which got me interested in biochar. He did experiments where he actually did different beds and he monitored them over time onto how they did. So this is a backyard experiment. You could do this sort of experimentation too. But this means that we are not going to be using mimosa as a, at least not as a, uh, a foliar, you know, just taking the leaves off and using them as a fertilizer. If I say foliar fertilizer, you think of uh, watering or fertilizing the leaves. I mean, using the leaves as a fertilizer, we are not going to do that. It obviously is not a good deal. And we could run another test and see, but we probably don't need to. This is probably enough information. And it's not like it's super easy, you know, to just go and pluck five gallons. It takes like 10 minutes to get five gallons of the leaves. So, you know, if it worked, it would be worth doing the 10 minutes, but this is pretty obvious. So, you know, do your backyard research, do your research in books and then test it in your backyard and see how it works. That really is the best way to do it. And that's how I write my books. Like when I wrote Totally Crazy Easy Florida Gardening, it didn't just come out of thin air. I didn't read a bunch of other gardening books and then say, this is what you're supposed to do. You know, what I actually did was put a whole bunch of plants into a death march through our backyard and the ones that survived were the ones that I recommend. So if I recommend a plant or a practice I will tell you if the idea came from somebody else and I haven't tried it, but I like to test as much as possible so I have real world experience. And of course your experience and your climate may vary, your soil varies, etc. So take what you can use, discard what you can't, and be sure to do your backyard experiments. I thought this was a very interesting thing, particularly over time here to see, man, that looks kind of suppressed compared to over here which is very lush and thick. One other thing I noticed about this bed that was fed with the mimosa leaves is that it bolted. We have multiple plants that have gone to seed in here and I pulled some of them and fed them to the animals already. See, we've got pak choy going to seed, we have mustards going to seed, and we have a few over here. The pak choy has decided just to go to seed but it seems to me that the amount that went to seed on the other side and how fast they went to seed shows that the plants were undergoing some stress. It's just another interesting note. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that was interesting. I know this is one of those nerd videos, so for those high IQ nerdy people out there, this is for you. We are brothers. Catch y'all next time. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll put a link to my books below if you're interested in reading rather than watching. I, I feel like I explain things better in print sometimes than I do on video, but y'all tolerate me very well. So thank you. I'll catch y'all next time. And until then, your thumbs always be green.